Hi, I'm Major, and this is my creative day. Well, for me to have my ideal creative day, probably the most important part of that would be in the morning having some form of meditation. So from when I wake up, try to get the mind like in a right state of where I want to be. Gratitude is a key for me that helps me get there. It helps me with my writing, my creativity, it helps me with my flow. Then I'll do whatever gets me in a good vibe. So sometimes that could be some psychedelics. It could be, it could be just a walk, whatever that day is calling for. And yeah, we go into the studio. Having the right people around for whatever the project is, is really important. So what that would do is like me, you know, contacting the people, organizing to get the right crew together at the studio to get the right energy for whatever it is that we're creating. So if you think about someone like even Quincy Jones on Thriller, he wasn't playing every instrument. What his role was is to get the best musicians together that had a cohesion and coherence with each other. And that could also understand his vision and Michael, and then they could translate that. So for me, I have a core of great team of musicians that I'll call. The other day we brought in someone playing shakuhachi from the forest. That's the great thing about creating is that you're, you never kind of know who you're gonna meet and we're all united on one goal. And so regardless of where we come from and we're all working as one in that moment. If the creativity has gone well enough and it's a success, I'm listening to that thing or whatever it is so much to where my energy is literally dead and I cannot play it anymore and I'm falling to sleep. Keeping motion and keeping active is really a key part of keeping my energy up, keeping my overall balance of my life together so that I can really focus on what I want. I'm a cancer survivor, so I know like going through great pain and great things that when you're not in physical health, you're not focused on anything else. So now it's like, you know, how can I be constantly working on myself to avoid as many issues as possible? I like to do a variety of things. So for me, at least three or four days of the week, I like to do some type of strength training, either weights or calisthenics. And then the other day, is stretching. I even kind of include Pilates in there. That's strength and flexibility and movement. Being active and moving in general definitely affects my creativity because it's just a representative of the flow of just life in general. So if I'm stagnant, I feel like it will make my creativity a bit more stagnant. If I'm moving, it helps me to keep movement in my flow. I feel like it all definitely connects. For me, meditation is strengthening of awareness. And once I started to view it like that, it really helps me. Because before I used to think meditation was like, I need to shut down my mind. I don't know if anyone else is out there like that, but just active. I'm thinking about things all the time. So for me, that was kind of like annoying. And I started learning that there's a word for that called monkey mind. And I was like, how do I tame this monkey mind? Like what's possible when I have a clear mind? So that was what kind of started me into the idea of meditation. And what I've started to do now, instead of say, oh, that means I failed at meditation. I look at that as like one rep of an exercise. And eventually, as I start bringing my mind back to the meditation, back to meditation, those distractions start happening less and less and less until you get into like a real flow. Meditation is training your mind to be focusing on the things that you want to focus on. And that's why manifestation helps with goals. And it's crazy, I have a friend who's doing meditation and she says, yeah, when I'm meditating, all my dreams come true. I was like, same for you? Like, wow, the same thing for me. I've had experience with a lot of different psychedelics. Ironically, even cannabis is considered psychedelic. The most ones that I would like use these days would probably be mushrooms, whether it's a micro dose or some type of greater ceremony, always with intention. I think it's the most important part. Ayahuasca, like I've, I've had many different experiences with LSD and things like that. But I think that for me these days, the ones I'm most resonate with is just some mushrooms and some cannabis. If someone feels the psychedelics calling them, then I will help them to kind of walk through it in a way that's safe. Psychedelics change your doors of perception in a sense. And if art is based off of how we perceive things and creativity is that, then psychedelics, if they're altering your whole perspective, of course, you're gonna get some wild creations that come from it. And I'm sure, you know, if you think about like even back to the Beatles and to Pink Floyd and all of these types of things, to think about transformative moments that creativity and psychedelics merged and some type of consciousness expansion comes from that. And I think, I think it's really cool.
If you are interested in hearing more about creativity, check out our new Audible original, Psychedelic Frequency.